G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Welcome to patch 2.5, Ixwa Strike. And today we're going to be talking about the strike aircraft to come to the Soviet Union. This is the Su-17M2 and is the very first plane that we're going to see in War Thunder with variable geometry wings. This plane is insane, to say the least. And giving it a couple of extra little mechanics and a couple of extra little characteristics has provided for an interesting level of gameplay. You can see here that the wings have a variable geometry. You can swing, sweep them or swing them back and forth. If you want to get some low speed handling, you can sweep the wings forward or you can reduce the sweep rather. And if you wanted some speed at the cost of your handling and your maneuverability, you can sweep the wings back or increase the sweep and get some better speed. This plane is basically an Su-7 on steroids. It's absolutely brilliant and has a very, very high top speed. You can comfortably sit with this plane around about 1360. I believe though you can push the plane beyond 1400 kilometers per hour in a straight line at sea level which basically brings it to the speed of something like the FGR2 or the F-104S, and this plane's a 10.3. In this situation here, I believe I'm in a full down tier, so we're going to be getting our SEAL Club on, but of course this plane is just as capable in a full up tier, meaning a 10.7 match, especially considering that it has a very, very fast airspawn. The airspawn on this particular plane makes it really, really strong. As you can see, I'm very, very far out from my allies, and I'm basically creeping into enemy territory here, where the AV-8s and the AG-7Ds are getting their airspawn. I'm going to go for the AV-8 here, but he dips just underneath my guns, giving me a pretty shit firing solution, so I managed to miss my shots. And now we have an A-7D, who has decided that he wants some Su-17 booty. He must have seen new plane and decided to froth at the mouth, following me into oblivion, sending an AIM-9J my way. But the thing is, at 4.5 kilometers, and with this kind of speed, I'm doing Mark 1.1+, plus, and so I'm able to basically break away from this missile without really breaking a sweat. The A7D is not a plane that is renowned for its performance. Although it does have fairly decent turning capability, the A7D is not a fast plane. In fact, it's subsonic. I don't even think it has an afterburner from memory, although I might be confusing that with another plane. You know, the same way that I do with the Crusader 2 and the uh, F7U Cutlass. I think, I think I've got it right this time. Let me know in the comments section below. I have made that mistake several times, and I will probably continue to make that mistake. Like I said... I'm not very uh, knowledgeable when it comes to Cold War aircraft. In fact, I'm not really aware of some of the aircraft at these particular tiers. So something like the Su-17, I had actually never heard of until it came to War Thunder. Now that I have heard of it, I think I really like it. I think it's a pretty good aircraft. Considering that it doesn't have flares and a radar, it's not particularly incredible on the fighter front unless you put it in a full down tier, and this is where it really shows its strength. I have four enemies, soon to be five, coming out to me on my six, and AV-8 decides it's a great idea to launch an AIM-9G in that aspect for some reason, and you can just see the absolute swarm of enemies. There's a Harrier GR-1 joining the fray, another AV-8 has decided that he wants some booty. I swing around just enough for the AIM-9G to lose its focus. And at this point in the game, most of the enemies and allies are still alive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the nose down, get a little bit of speed, and send one for the Jaguar, because I think that that Jaguar is going to be a bit of a threat. Now, I am correct because he does launch a missile, but I managed to sit my R60 right into his booty hole, and it gives me a nice little kill. This thing gets four R60s, and with its speed, you can basically run around the battlefield with impunity in a full down tier, provided that you don't come against an F-104S, which is probably the only thing that can seriously run you down. If you're at full speed, the F-4C really doesn't stand too much of a chance, and things like the AV-8s, the Shenyang F-5, other Harriers, and other lower tier F-104s don't really have the same amount of efficacy against you. This AV-8 believes it's a great idea to pull a vertical head-on with someone who is in a better position than them, and I decide no, I'm not dealing with that. 
Speaking of dealing with it, this Harrier here is going to be dealing with an AIM-9, no, not an AIM-9, an R-60, because we're Russians and we do things the Russian way. The Harrier decides he wants to disappear, just like one of Stalin's former best friends, and I'm out of here with my speed, basically booking it, getting myself some distance, and then going into a vertical, converting that speed into altitude, and then again into speed when I go down for an extra kill. So this F-104 has gone below me. I know the F-104 doesn't turn very well and the A-7D pops out. Now, if he'd been heading towards me, I would have shit my pants a little bit, but unfortunately for him, he's in a shitty spot. The F-104 uh, manages, sorry, the F-100 is in a good position to be gunned, but I don't get my guns on in time. I thought he was gonna commit to a head-on, and instead the AV-8 decides to pick up the R-60 for me. So I can't really complain. There's a nice little kill, and one of the things that I have noticed with this plane is that its variable sweep wings, uh, there's, there are two modes for it. So you have your auto mode and you have your manual mode. I personally prefer the manual mode because I'd like to control when I want more lift and when I want more speed. Now, in the case of the auto mode, it seems to toggle on and off randomly. I don't know if that's a bug. I don't know if it's just the auto manual button not working, but I would really like to see that fixed because if I want to turn, I'm going to sweep the wings purposefully. If I want to retain my, my speed or something like that, I'm going to do it that way. Uh, I basically want a little bit more control slash authority over the whole thing, and that would be really, really lovely. What else is really lovely is R60s. I don't know what's with the R60s, but they are really, really nice missiles at the moment. However, the F-104 manages to throw my R60 off, and I've noticed that I'm on low fuel, so I'm just going to sit behind him without the afterburner. I have the engine power for it, and with a little bit of a spray, a little bit of a gamer move here, I managed to shear off his wing. This plane is actually amazing to fly because you get that different level of control with the variable sweep wings it gives you a real different experience and personally it's something that i'm quite fond of at the moment i think this is a really really nice plane overall and speaking of nice plane overall the f100 presents a big juicy target so what am i going to do i'm going to take that target and secure the ace What's left? A Hunter. Now this Hunter happens to be from Nigel's Squadron, and for those of you who don't know, that squadron is owned by me. So this gentleman here, he decides to run stealth belts for some reason, uh, and he thinks that it is going to be a good idea to turn fight an SU-17. He quickly realizes it's a bad idea, and luckily for me, my aim isn't exactly perfect here, and he goes and cuts underneath me. Very, very smart there. You know that it's a Nigel Squadron member when he does things like that. Only kidding, of course. It's uh, I actually don't know who this fine Nigel specimen is, but um, we had like a little, little nice little dog fight, and I should have messaged him on Discord when the match finished, uh, thanking him for being sporting, which you will find later. So, at this point in time, I'm on some critical fuel. I haven't mentioned my fuel load, but I have taken 20 minutes, and 20 minutes is barely enough. You need to have a quick match for that 20 to be uh, enough fuel. If you do end up getting into like a 30 minute match, oh sorry, a, a match where you need that 30 minutes of fuel, you are going to struggle in terms of your performance. You are going to be a little bit fat, I've noticed, uh, eating too many American hamburgers. And honestly, I would personally stick to the 20. Live the fast life, live by the fuel, die by the fuel, I suppose. And that for me, is a fairly interesting consequence because this match has dragged on just a little bit longer than I anticipated. I have 14 rounds of cannon, and it looks like the Hunter is going to come back for a quick little head-on. So, I'm going to fire the afterburner just a little bit to get myself to 100% throttle. I'm going to go for a quick head-on. I know he's running stealth, so I am not going to be looking for tracers. He decides to not go for the re-engage in the head-on, which is very smart, and he continues to keep his speed because he doesn't know. I could have R60s, uh, I could have full fuel. He wouldn't know, and he it's too hard to tell at that sort of speed and when you're basically dodging someone. So, what am I going to do here? I've basically put the wings in full sweep until my fuel goes out, level myself out, and then take the sweep off the wings. Straighten them out a little bit, gain a little bit more lift. And normally I wouldn't show you guys this type of clip, but in this particular circumstance, it demonstrates perfectly the benefits of a variable sweep wing. When you need to be in glide mode, you don't have that limit of your highly swept wings, like something like a MiG-19 or an SU-7. 
you have that opportunity here to glide with enough speed to land you at the runway without any problems. These, these little features, these little sort of things are so nice. I am really, really enjoying this plane. I do think it is a touch on the broken side though, simply because of that air spawn. The fact that this plane is basically as fast as a MiG-21 Bist at sea level, granted it doesn't have radar, it doesn't have flares, and only carries four R60s, I still believe that as a ground attacker, this thing is more than capable of being 10.7. Being a strike fighter type plane, or a plane that is designed more for uh, ground attack and bombing runs, I think this plane is better suited to 10.7 just because of its sort of characteristics. I do think, however, that this plane at the moment, as it stands currently at 10.3 with an air spawn, is a lot of fun. However, is it going to be balanced in the long run? I don't think so. And this is where the problem lies. Personally, I think that all planes should be balanced well, and I think that if you don't balance a plane well, that is a symptom of a bad game. For me, having this thing balanced properly, in my opinion, would make it fairer, and a fairer plane, in my opinion, is going to be one that brings more people to the game. Just because you have a single overpowered plane now, doesn't mean that it's going to be overpowered when power creep kicks in. The SU-17 at the moment, as it stands, is a little bit too strong. And this is why I, not quite campaigned, but I advocated for so long for things like the A7D to go to 10.0. I understand that it might be shit stock, but that doesn't give it an excuse to be at, a, to, at a, a low battle rating when it's spaded. And for me, whilst it sucks that you can't really have stock battle ratings, I, I think it would be a little bit too complicated for the, uh, for the new players. I think it would just be a, a little bit too much. But at the same time, there are fairly valid reasons for it, and I definitely see those. So, with this plane, I think spaded, it is going to be ridiculously strong, and when more people get their hands on it, I don't think it's going to replace the MiG-21 BIS. I do think it is going to replace the MiG-21 SMT, though. The MiG-21 SMT is very capable at the moment, but as a, as a plane that's basically less powerful, I think that it's going to be sort of outlived now. The SMT is very strong, it's very good, it has the maneuverability, but the SU-17 just has the speed. And I think the speed is going to be a little bit more of, a, of an X factor, if you will, in these types of situations here. In the sorts of games that I'm showing you. Plus, giving it an, a, a fighter spawn, sorry, an attacker spawn, or a strike fighter spawn rather, is a lot more of a, of a Monka S situation, in my opinion. Something like the SU-17 is great fun. It has plenty of great ordnance options, uh, plenty of bombs, and plenty of those laser-guided missiles. I, I really like them. I've been having a, a go at them in uh, test drives. I've been sort of mucking around with them there. I might take them into a tank's RB battle. We'll see how we go. But honestly, these things are really, really nice. The bombs, if you're a bit of a tryhard and want to get as many kills as possible. I think the bombs are going to be the better option in the long run, but those missiles are really good, especially if you have maybe a group of enemies or something like that. Overall though, the SU-17 is a really nice addition to the game. I'm very, very glad they didn't go with something like the MiG-23 or the uh, F-14, uh, even the F-111, although the F-111 is likely not that far off something like the SU-17. I would kind of expect it to be on par with something like a better Phantom, uh, maybe something like that, although I'm not quite familiar. So all the experts, let me know in the comments below. I know you guys are a lot more knowledgeable than I am. As for the SU-17, I hope it goes to 10.7. There are plenty of uh, things that need to be smoothed out with it. But overall, it is a very enjoyable plane to fly. I've had so much fun playing it. The R60s are beautiful. The performance is beautiful. The variable sweep wings are beautiful. And I can't wait to see more variable sweep wing planes in the game. I think that that is going to be something that is extremely interesting. Overall, very happy, but I would like to, like I said, see some further changes. So ladies and gentlemen, we are looking here at F-104C as we're going to wrap up this video. He's gone for a little bit of an airfield strafe, but there's no one there. So as my fuel runs low, an R-60 shall finish the job. Beautiful R-60s, I really love these missiles. They're some of my favorites in the game amongst the AIM-9J. So ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up the video for today. I hope you enjoyed. 
I'm enjoying the SU-17. I hope you guys get a chance to fly it, and I hope it gets balanced appropriately. As for everything else, thank you very much for the support on the live stream last night. This was taken from live stream footage, so I greatly appreciate your time. I greatly appreciate everyone having a little chat, and of course, everyone using their subscriptions, their uh, Twitch Primes, their stuff like that, any way to support the channel, I greatly appreciate it. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I'd appreciate it if you left a like and a comment for the algorithm. It's a beautiful day, and it's a fairly decent patch. Let me know how you've been feeling about the patch overall. I've had a good experience, and some people haven't. So, again, let me know if I'm an outlier. Maybe I'm a, I'm a bit of a special chicken, you know what I mean? But, for the most part, take care, and I'll catch you next time.